Hey there YouTube, welcome on back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, Solo Tabletop Gamer. And in this video, I decided I wanted to change some different uh, camera views. Um, compared to uh, the video recording equipment I've used in the past, it's been kind of large and cumbersome. And this one I have is relatively very small, compact. I'm able to um, really get some cool camera views if you will and that's what I decided to do with this uh, game session I know I've read quite a few of the comments and some of the people said hey we'd, we'd like to see the dice rolls so I mean you'll be able to see the dice rolls and uh, yeah so I decided to uh, do a ground level view if you will of the game board because I've always done the top down view and um, by doing this, I figured, uh, it, in the spirit of this game, in the spirit of Rune Quest itself, it's such the the combat mechanic of it is so cinematic that I think it's only just going to, um, well, help that even more so in this uh, game series that I'm doing here. So. One thing I can say is I meant to get a video up last weekend, but unfortunately it did not work out. Uh, I got a new game system that I had picked up for Cyber Monday and got into that and I consumed my whole weekend, which I plan on um, doing another video maybe later on today and, and talking about some of the new stuff that I have uh, recently acquired and brought into my library. One of them you can see right here, which is this. I did finally get that, the third edition Ruin Quest, role-playing in Glorantia. So um, I have looked through that book. It's an excellent book. The artwork is wonderful in it. And the cool thing is it's all 100% completely compatible with the original system that I am playing right now which is this right here and so before I go any further into the video if you liked the video give me a thumbs up and if you have not subscribed and perhaps you're watching this just to watch it um, or you're just uh, new into RPG or I know a lot of people um, I've recently seen a report where they said that uh, Tabletop role-playing games have gained a lot of popularity since this pandemic and, you know, people being, you know, restricted as to what they can do and they're looking for outlets to be able to, uh, you know, keep them busy so they've been discovering role-playing games. So if you're one of those people and you stumble across my channel and, you know, welcome on in, click that subscribe button. Uh, followed by the bell icon every time I upload a new video you get a notification so you don't miss one now as many of you and I know my subscribers know who are watching this I'm a solo tabletop gamer so I play role-playing games by myself and I've done that for years and years and years and I enjoy them greatly and um, I think going forward into the future, we're going to see a whole lot more of this as well. Um, we're particularly seeing it with board games. We're seeing it. Um, one board game that I was watching a review of, and it's been out for a while. This morning, while I was drinking my coffee, was Folklore: The Affliction, which is a board game that's actually a role-playing game that plays cooperatively. But it's an introduction for uh, people who are looking to get into role-playing games. So it's like and kind of teaches you how to do that and you learn as you go along. So I don't think this is going anywhere anytime soon. And I think this is going to be... Um, it's going to be gaining a lot more popularity as the years go on by. And it's good stuff. It's real good stuff. Um... And as I like to tell everybody, you know, don't knock it until you try it. So that's just the way that it is. 
All right, my friends, let's um, pick up where I left off. And the characters had just recently stumbled upon a an encampment of um, goblins in the ancient forest. And they were able to defeat them pretty quickly and get them out of the way. Um, they didn't really it wasn't really a whole lot of opposition for him but one thing that they did find and drill storm moon who is like the leader of this little endeavor if you will this quest given by the king to deliver a message to master talos who is the caretaker of the forest of memory he did find a map and that map showed a couple locations of nearby goblin encampments and that was put into his inventory and well, it'll be dealt with later but currently at the point of time we really don't have a whole lot of time to drop what they're doing to go and pursue that because they have to deliver this message for the king to master talos and that's where our story begins once again in the forest I think I'm gonna fill out the back with some more All right, so from their current location, let's see how long it's gonna take for them to reach Master Talos's location. I'm gonna roll that one hour. So within one hour's time, I'm gonna roll my percentage die. And like how I'd like to do my encounters, if it's a high number, there's a high probability of an encounter. If it's a low number, very low probability. That is 21%. So, very low probability. After about an hour's worth of travel through the ancient forest, uh, they finally reached their destination point. And I'm going to set this out. I recently purchased this, and I haven't had a chance to primer it yet. And it's a new piece I got for... Uh, my miniature scare machine and uh, role playing, and that is this right here. So, as they reach their destination point. They can see a path that's leading up to this area in the forest as the way the king described it where they could find Master Talos. Let me see if I can use something a little bit different than putting my uh, big old hand in the way of the camera all the time. I'll just move him like so. There we go. All right. So, Endrail Storm Moon. I'm going to do a tracking check. I want to see if he notices anything odd, basically. 23. Okay. Um, so as he's 
observing and taking in this area of the forest and everything, he really doesn't notice anything um, too alarming that would throw any red flags up. As they get closer, to the dwelling here. It's at that point he does notice something that, um, well, doesn't look too ordinary. And that's the fact that the door is actually splintered in some areas and almost appears as if um, a battle has taken place, if you will. Indrail Stormmoon is going to equip his scimitar. So as he pulls the sword out, he approaches cautiously. And I want to, um, let me see what I can do here. Move silent. I got a 55% in my skill. Let me see. Oh, he's got a critical on that. So he motions to his companions to walk very slowly, very quietly, and cautiously. He very silently and quickly approaches the door. He pushes the door open. Now, this is the question that I need to answer, and I think I'm going to go to my oracle for this one. Let me see, is there something inside? Roll my cider. Roll a 20. So as he quiet, slowly and quietly, well I should say slowly and as quiet as he possibly can, opens the door. Inside, well, let me hold on. I shouldn't. I shouldn't move that fast yet, because I have to roll a perception check. Okay. Man, I love the way that this system plays out. I'm going to move this here just to make it a little bit more fits almost perfectly as to what I need and it would be a better viewpoint anyways. Okay. As he opens the door and peers inside, it's at that point that'll work there are three hideous looking creatures that are 
at this point ransacking the place and going through the possessions of what can only be imagined as Master Talos. Let me move this a little bit. Okay, this is good because we got the drop on them. And let me see what I can do with this. He motions to his companions to basically, uh, like, come on up here, and then points to his eyes, and then points in to the dwelling. All right, so here's our other two characters. Turin Borlean is going to equip his Bastard Sword, and Daylon False Shadow. I think I'm going to just equip him with his Longbow. He seems to do pretty good with that. Indrail Storm Moon is quietly and clearly let me move these guys around because this is Turin right here he tells him um there are as he says there's orc inside here he says we have to be quick if we are to survive this and to kill them very quickly let me turn this light on I don't know if that really helped or not. There we go. That does a little better. At that point, Turin Borlin reaches for his bastard sword and begins to unsheathe it. Now, So they will go last regardless by the strike rank, but we do have the drop on them. Once Turin, Turin has his sword drawn and ready, at that point, Endrail Storm Moon. Let me see, let me look at my strike ranks here. Getting a little too far ahead of myself. No, Torin Borlin. is going to advance into this area and begin the attack. All right. He gets a 15% to his attack bonus. Let's see what we have here. Take him to a 39. Well, let's see, because the enemy also has dodge. Oh, right on the money. Mm. No, he beat him by one point, so this is good. This is good. <laughs> and I rolled a 16. Let's see what a 16 does on the hit location chart. Which would be the left arm. I got a feeling this is going to hurt this thing. So D10 damage plus a 1D6. right on 15 points total damage 
the right arm only has three hit points. So as he comes in with the sword, he just <laughs> right through, um, literally, uh, I mean, taking the arm right off. The creature, obviously, as any creature would, would be screaming in agonizing pain at this point. But before they can do anything, Endrail Storm Moon moves in and begins to attack this one right here. And he has a 25% to his attack bonus. Oh, that's a fumble. 99%. Oh, man. Let's consult the fumble table and see what it says. Lose next parry. Well, that's not all bad. All right. Daylon Fall Shadow is the last one, which is right here. But problem is, well, with the door here can get a shot on the one here in the center. So let's try that. First attack bonus. Oh man. Yes. Fifty-four percent for him. Unfortunately the gig is up. They already all know they're here, so this guy is going to get his dodge bonus, which he has to have a 40%. Let's see what he rolls. A 14, of course. The orc at that point is able to dodge the arrow as it comes in. And, well, no dice as they would say. Now the cool thing is, I do get two more arrow attacks before the turn is over. The problem is my line of sight is blocked because I got this guy engaged with this right here, he's engaged with battle with him right here, and that just leaves the center open. And the fact that he dodged and went over here and is now hiding behind this guy right here, well, there's pretty much not a whole lot else I can do at this point. Um, dang, now it goes over to the orcs turn. Hopefully we survive this. All right, now unfortunately, I'm gonna move him out of the way quickly. Andrael loses his next parry. So that's going to really, really suck. So I'm not going to be able to parry this turn. And hopefully he misses. But let's go in the order in which the attacks went. So I'm going to resolve his first. And It's a 40% to his weapon skill. <sighs> Rolled a 44 and he gets a 40%. So. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Let me see. Defense bonus. 
her in. Fifteen percent. Ninety-seven. Yeah, no. I'm going to receive some damage here. Three. My hit location. Just gonna be my right leg. I'm gonna do one D six plus one damage. Oh, well that's good. Two points and my armor. So I'm only gonna take one point to the right leg. I can handle that. All right. Now it's time to resolve this one. And this isn't, oh God, I, I really hope he misses. I really do. Ninety six. Yeah, that's a fumble. And um That's good. That's real good. Let's see what happens to the orc considering he fumbled. There's that fumble chart. Let's see what he fumbled on. Loses next attack. Hey, that's good. I like that one. Okay, now, the last, oh, uh. <laughs> so the last uh, guy is this one right here. This orc is going to move over and try to attack Endrail as well. Ninety-one percent. It's not a fumble, but my defense bonus is a twenty. Sweet, eleven percent. Um. So as he goes to swing, Endrail is able to sidestep his attack, and the sword just doesn't even come anywhere near possibility of striking him okay so it's top of the batting order again um 
as this battle is all crowded basically right here by the door Daylon Fall Shadow is technically first in the strike rank he has the quickest so but there's really no room for him to step up inside of here I'm going to have him step as close up into the doorway as he possibly can and target this guy right here. So let's go for his first attack. That'd be 24%. And let's see what the... Uh, Ugly orc gets. Oh, 10%. Oh, man, that orc is troublesome. So the orc is able to defend against the attack. Let's see what the next one brings, because he gets three arrows. Ooh, 11%. I like that one. I really like that one. The orc gets a 27% considering he has a dodge bonus, but it's not enough. He's going to take some damage. Let's see what location. And that would be a 2 on the 20 sider, which is going to be the right leg. Five points. Okay, I gotta put a numbering system here to keep track of all of this because as the points say he's number one. Him number two, and he would be number three. All right. Sweet. The arrow hits his right leg and just boom literally shattering the bone in his leg the orcs falls off balance momentarily and howls out in pain as it's trying to brace its itself and shift all its weight to its other leg to um, try to make a meager stumble to get out of the way of the line of fire before it can Thirty-two. My attack bonus is twenty-five. Nice. Let's see what this guy gets now. A ninety-two. Yep, he's just gonna take even more damage. Let's see where he takes the damage this time. 20, which will be the head. No. <laughs> All right. We have rolled a five. That'll be a total of six points. The head only has four hit points. At that point, as the orc is trying to balance itself up against the, the wall and get out of the way of the line of fire, the next arrow comes in and just crack right into the skull of this thing and it slumps lifelessly to the floor all right now moving on turin 
right here is going to attack this orc. He gets a 15%. That is, mm, Sixty-three. Let's see what the orc gets. Unfortunately, the orc is able to dodge his attack and step out of the way. The sword at that point just glances into the within inches of the orc. He can hear the whoop as the sword comes past. Now, let's go to Elendril. He still has his scimitar drawn and he gets 25% his attack bonus. Nice! Nice! That's going to be 5%. And let's see what the orc can do with that. Well, close but no cigar. He has literally beat him by just about three points. I mean, talk about cutting it close. See the hit location, seven. The abdomen, I like that. I like that. Let's see how much damage. One D eight plus one. <laughs> Two points to the abdomen. I don't know, I'll take it. One. The Orc uh, growls in pain, but he's not mortally wounded, but his abdomen is slashed open and blood is beginning, black blood is beginning to pool underneath its armor and run down. Now, unfortunately, it's the Orc's turn and we'll start with him. He's going to step back up and take a swing at Turin. That's going to be a 30%. Let's see what Turin can do. I'm going to parry the attack. That'd be a 31, so by one point, I literally successfully parry the attack. The only problem is how much damage does my weapon take. So that does 1d6 plus one damage. So my weapon's going to take four points of damage for that. Well, better the weapon than my character. All right. So as the orc swings up, getting ready to cave the skull in of this, uh, as he sees that this feeble elf, his, well, feeble human, I should say, his bastard swords comes up and boom, blocking the attack. All right. Second attack. Uh, Attack of will be this guy right here on Elendril. So let's see how that works out. Hopefully not good. Ninety-three percent. It's not a fumble, but it's not that great either. Um, so with his weapon skill, that'll bring him to a fifty-three. 
What do I want to do here? I can defend or I can parry. I think I'm just going to do a defense because I get a higher bonus on that. Right on, that'll take me down to a 26. So I was able to successfully defend against the attack and move out of the way of it before any damage would come to my character. Now, top of the batting order again, Daylon Fall Shadow. And fortunately, with Elendril stepping aside to avoid the attack, he has opened up this nice little area for him to attack. He 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 he. Sixty four per cent there for his first arrow. Let's see how the orc responds. Oh man, zero two. He is able to dodge that like a pro and just he gets out of dodge before the arrow can even attack him and just flies through thin air and it's probably stuck in the wall here of Master Talos's quarters. <laughs> um, I think what that's going to be his one and only attack. Because if I move, I'm going to lose my other attack. So I really can't do that. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to because he would have a wall here which would block his line of sight to him. So it would look something on the lines of like so. So that's not gonna work. So I think at this point, the next attack is gonna go to Turin. And Turin, 15% to his bonus. Oh, that's a critical, flat out critical, 0.4%, um, which means all damage goes straight to hit points. And he gets a 1d6 damage bonus plus a 1d10 to. So he rolled a 10 and the 6, which is a 16. Uh, I keep forgetting to show them for the camera. I know you guys want to see these, but I'll just roll them up and show you right there. Let's just for uh, shits and giggles see the location. Uh, number nine, which would be the abdomen. Oh man, that is sweet. And they only have a total. His hit points here. A total of 11 hit points. So, as uh, the orc is moving and shifting around trying to avoid the attack, Turin seizes his moment and sees a vulnerable spot, leaps in, taking his sword, and just thrusts it right through his abdomen, just as it exit out his back and his black orcish blood he vomits up all over the front of his armor and then slumps lifeless to the floor he is out of the game all right which leaves one left with his endril 
and he moves up with his sword drawn. Let's see what skills he has. Before he attacks, Elendriel says, surrender or die. I want to see how the orc, if he can perceive what he's saying or not. Let's roll on this perception real quick. No, the orc is rather stupid and just more or less growls at him. And it's at that point... Elendril's going to follow through with the attack. Ooh, nice. Nice. So, Elendril's bonus... It's a 25% attack bonus. He ruled a 29, which is a 4%, which means this orc is going to have to roll phenomenal to avoid this attack. Sixty percent for him, and his dodge is 40, which is going to leave him a 20. It's not enough. He's gonna he's gonna be hurting. Number eight is the hit location, which will be the admin again. And it's gonna be a 1d8. Come on, give me a good roll here. Yes! Total of seven points. He only has three points left. Elendril walks up and with the dexterity and nimble list of only a high elf can do, he is able to slash his sword, bringing his sword back, slashes through his abdomen, and then thrusts the sword into his abdomen, exiting his back, and killing the orc in one quick pull. And it's out of the game. All right. Now, that is done. First things first that I gotta see. I'm gonna roll against the land drills spot hidden item. See if there's anything in here. If I can see what they were looking for, any clues. Roll a 57. No. As he searches the um, Master Talos' quarters over, looking through his possessions and things like that, he doesn't see anything that's a red flag. Um, pointing, giving him any clues, which it's at that point, Lendriel says, I think perhaps they stumbled upon this when Master uh, Telos was gone, which is explained why the door was broken in. They broke in looking for him and were trying to look for answers, much like we are right now. I'm going to search the Orcs? I want to see if the orcs have anything. So, Elendril searches over the orc carcasses. No, he finds absolutely nothing of use other than crudely made orc weapons and useless items to themselves. They, at that point, drag the orc carcasses out of Master Talos's quarters 
respectively and um, drag him off into a nearby area and burn the corpses. It is at this point they are left with the question where is Master Talos? And considering the forest of memory without his expertise and guide can be a maze. And this is going to pose some, well, some issues because they could get lost in the forest of memory. And if something has happened to Master Talos, unfortunately, the message in which they were sent to deliver will never reach his hands. But given the fact that um, they have nothing else to go on at this point, they have no other choice. All right. All right. Now, yeah, this isn't going to. This is uh, pretty cool. It's not going exactly the way I thought it was going to go, but that's what I love about RPGs is you think it's going to go one way and then one dice roll will take you in a completely different area of the RPG. So, after they have disposed of the bodies and um, close the door to Master Talos's quarters, if you will. It is at that point that they have but one choice left. And that is to begin to search the forest of memory. Decide to get rather interesting quickly. <laughs> 